Hello there. Welcome to Craft with Fee. Welcome to week five of the Christmas in July Stitch Along. So we're making a table runner. Now at this point you should have all of your bits and pieces. You can see them here. So we have our sashing pieces cut, our little corner stones, we've got all of our stitchery blocks here and then we've got those other little squares that we did in week two. So today we're going to be putting them together. Now the reason I've come on at the beginning of this video is I wanted to explain to you that I am going to be teaching you how to put this together as if you know nothing. Now I know that for um, a huge majority of you in the group that you actually know how to quilt and that you know all of the basics about the quarter inch seam and all those things, but there are some ladies in our group that have never quilted before. So I'm very mindful that they're in there and I don't want to assume that they know what to do. So we're going to be teaching you about the quarter inch seam and, and the importance of that and we're going to be doing it by you know, step by step so that you can follow along. So I do apologize in advance for those of you that already know how to do this. Um, and you can just fast forward you know, through the video if you like, if you, if you don't want to watch it all. But anyway, let's get over to the sewing machine. Okay, for the first step, what I want you to do is to take your pile of cornerstones, the green pieces, and I want you to take your sashing strips, which is the Sophie Red. And we're going to be taking four of the cornerstone pieces for each of our sashing strips. So you just need to do that. Just take your four little squares. And then you're going to need three of the sashing strips. So we'll pop the rest aside. And we're going to be sewing them together so that they form a strip that looks like this. So we've got a cornerstone, a sashing piece, a cornerstone, a sashing piece, a cornerstone, a sashing piece, and then a cornerstone. Now when we're doing quilting, we're always going to be using a quarter inch seam. Now to measure a quarter inch seam, you can use your ruler, which has got the marks at quarter inch, or you can use an actual quarter inch ruler. Now when I first started quilting, I would always draw my lines because I didn't have a quarter inch foot on my machine which of course makes it super easy, um, but of course not everyone has those and if you're not a quilter it doesn't actually come stock standard with most machines, it's an add-on, so you may need to draw your lines. But drawing your lines is as simple as that and then all you would do is to put your cornerstone on top of your sashing piece there and you would stitch straight across. Then you would put your next piece on the other end here draw your quarter inch seam and then sew it down and then add your next piece of sashing and so on. And then you will end up with a piece which looks like this. So you can see there that, that has been sewn at the quarter inch seam on all seams and then we have it um, looking just like that. Now what you need to do is to actually make nine of these before we get to the next stage and so once we've got the nine we'll take them to the ironing board and I'll show you how to iron them. Now there is a trick to ironing them so um, that's that's one of the things that I wanted to, to teach you. So go ahead and do that and as I said if you are a beginner draw your quarter inch line just on all of your little cornerstones to begin with. Just sit there and methodically just draw them all on and so then when you match them up to your little seams here you will be able to follow that line and you'll know that you've got a quarter inch seam because a quarter inch seam is crucial that it is the same on every piece because then that way all of your seams at the end will match up and we need them to match up on this table runner because it's going to have a lot of um, joint seams and you'll notice them if they're not correct. So take the time just to draw those lines on if you don't have a quarter inch foot and make sure that you've got them right and I'll see you back at the ironing table. Okay, as mentioned, ironing is very important. It's one of the most important things other than a quarter inch seam in quilting. Um, and so what I like to do is once I've sewn something is I like to iron along that sewn line and I do what I call setting the seam. And what that does is it just um, makes that seam nice and neat. It sort of it sets the sewing in properly I don't even know what it is, but I always do it and it, um, it always helps me get those lovely seams. Okay, and now the other important thing is to um, have your seams all going the one way. So for this purpose, we're going to iron all of these seams off to the right. But of course, because this strip is the same, 
uh, on both ends, it, it wouldn't really matter, but it does need to be all in the one direction. Because the next row that we attach to this, we will have the seams in the opposite direction. And then we can match the seams and match our, our uh, fabrics up much easier. So we iron from the back and iron from the front, and then that will give you a perfectly ironed strip. And as I said, you always go in the one direction. Okay, so now we have all of these ironed and they're all nice and flat, so we're just gonna pop them off to the side. So for this next stage, you're going to need some clips of some description, and you're going to need eight little pieces of paper, and they're all going to be numbered from one to eight. And they're just scrap paper. And what we're going to do is start putting together our rows. So we're going to start off with row one, okay? And what we're going to need for that is a stitchery block. Now you can choose whichever stitchery block you want. Um, it's entirely up to you. So you're going to need to choose a stitchery block and you're also going to need to choose two of our blocks from week two that we did. So I'm going to go with a red one and I'm going to go with a pink one. And then you're going to need, as well, you're going to need four of our Sophie Red sashing strips. So how this is going to go together is we're going to put a sashing strip down there, like so. Then we're going to put another sashing strip on the opposite side, like so. Then we're going to be putting one of our squares then we're going to put another sashing strip, then we're going to put a, another block, and then we're going to put a sashing strip. And that is going to be our line one, row one. So then on, in the quilt itself, then you're going to have a sashing strip, and then we're going to do row two. So we're going to do two rows at a time together. So the next one we're going to do now is going to be line two. So same thing, we need to choose a stitchery block and then we need to choose two of our little um, squares again. Sorry, I'm losing my words today. Okay, and we also need, of course, our sh sashing strips again. So we're going to go sashing strip and then we're going to go with a square and then we're going to go with a sashing strip and then we're going to go with the stitchery block. Then we're going to go with a sashing strip. And then we're going to go with another one of our squares. And then we're going to go with a sashing strip. Okay? So that's the first two rows. Now what I like to do is with the first row is I like to put my pieces in the order that they're going to be sewn in a little pile like this. And then I can take that off to the sewing machine. And I know that I've got them in order. And that is where your little clip comes in place. And then you can clip it. Okay? And then pop our little strip away. We only put that there for visuals. So then we're going to get row two ready to go to the sewing machine. And of course, you can lay out the whole table runner if you like. But I, for the purpose of the video, we're just going to do two rows at a time. We're going to sew them. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do rows three and four and we're going to continue on till we've got the whole eight done. I think that's going to be the easiest way to show you. Um, so, yep, that's what we're going to do now. So we'll go off to the machine, we'll sew them, then we'll go back to the ironing board and I'll show you this time the purpose of ironing in the right direction. Okay, so now we have row one and row two that we've sewn together. So we have our seams there. So the first thing we're going to do We'll take um, number two away and we'll just have number one. Now always keep your number with you so that you don't lose track of what your row number is. It's a little bit of a hint. Now you can buy these from different types of quilt shops that are already um, laminated and they have the numbers on them. You can buy them in the alphabet, so A, B, C, or you can buy numbers, or you can just make your own. I don't always use rows, but um, for the purpose of this video, I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. So now you can see I've just set all of those seams. Now before we start ironing them, we're going to be using the cornerstones in between these rows. So they're going to hook up like so. But what we need to do is to make sure that our 
seams for this row are in the opposite direction to the seams in this row. Now, of course, because this row is exactly the same, whether it goes that way or whether or not it goes that way, it's not going to matter too much, but I still wanted to teach you um, the reason why we do that. So if we turn this over and we're going to iron that way, we're going to iron to the left. So we're just going to press as we go and iron all of those seams in the one direction. And you'll often read that in a pattern. It'll say, iron, um, iron one row in one direction, iron the next row in the other direction. And that's the reason, so that we can match these seams up. And I will show you how to match the seams up when we start putting all the rows together. But essentially, what it's going to be is that you are going to pop this row above and then you're going to turn it over like that and then you are going to match these seams and you can see here, I'll use one here, you can see here that that one goes in that direction and that one goes in the opposite direction and then you're going to marry them up and so when you sew that quarter inch um, line across there you will see that these here will match perfectly, you'll have that beautiful junction because you've ironed correctly. That's all it's about. It's just about being accurate and your ironing. That is very important in this process. So now I'm going to um, go ahead and put my clip back on number one now that I have ironed it. And we'll pop it aside until we've got all our rows done and then we can start joining them all together. Um, but I'll iron this one off camera and then I will take you back over to the cutting table where we will lay out rows three, four and five. Okay, let me show you rows three, four, and five. I have put them together and sewn them together and pressed them. So row three is a sashing strip, red daisies, sashing strip, pink star, sashing strip, stitchery block, sashing strip. Okay, block four, sashing, sorry, row four, sashing strip, grey star, sashing strip, stitchery block, sashing strip, pink star, sashing strip. That was row four. Row five is a sashing strip, a bauble, sashing strip, red paper daisy, sashing strip, grey star and a sashing strip. Come back and show you six, seven and eight. Okay, so we have row six and you can see there that we've, um, we've got a grey star, then we've got the Stitch rip block and then we've got a red paper daisy on the end there. So of course you've got your little sashings. You don't need me to tell you that. We're up to row six, so you should get the hang of it by now. Row seven is the paper daisies, pink star and a stitch rip block. And then row eight, we've got um, grey stars, stitch rip block and the red paper daisy goes there. So then we have all our rows. So we have our eight rows. So now it's time to join them all together. So how this is going to work is we are going to start off with a sashing strip. Then we're going to get row one. And you can see there that to the eye, these are going to match up beautifully. You can see that the sashing strips are going to go like so. And there will be another, um, let me move that up so you can see. There will be another sashing strip that will go down below that there. And you can see that each block then will have sashing, sashing, sashing. So around each of the blocks you've got sashing. Um, so we're going to join them all. So we're going to start off with a sashing strip, row one, another sashing strip, row two, and we're going to keep going on like so. But what I'm going to do to begin with is show you how we match up these seams to join them together. So we can take off our number one because we know that we're using number one. And then we're going to make sure that our... Um, seams are going off to the right so you want them going off to the right because remember these ones are going oops which way are these ones going these ones are let me just match it that's right yep so they're going to the left so you can see that those ones are going that way and these ones need to go that way so when you pop the two together like so you can see that this one will marry up beautifully with that one and you can actually feel I've told you this before when we've done these sort of things. You can see there that they 
are going to match beautifully and you can see how they lay down against one another and when you rub your finger along there you can feel them actually lay down against one another now you can use normal pins and pop a pin in either side or if you have fork pins which you can purchase from lots of different quilting stores you can pop a fork pin in there up in between both of them and you'll see that that will hold your seam in place now you can pop a pin in the end there so that your two ends are together and then when you get along here and you get along to your next seam you're going to do the same thing you're going to lay them together so that they marry up and that you push them and you can feel that they are laying down against one another and I'm going to use another fork pin and we're just going to pop that pin up there through that seam like so we can pop a pin in here. That one's got a bit of a bend in it. Looks like I've sewn over it. Okay, and we're going to keep going all the way along here and we're going to match up all of these seams. Now it's very important to take the time to match them because if you just start sewing at one end and then you get to the other end and your fabric may well match, it may well get to the end and it might just match perfectly, but I can guarantee you that these seams won't match. You need to take the time to pin them and pop them in place and make sure that each one of these little intersections marries up beautifully and then when you've sewn it with a quarter inch seam all the way along and you turn it over and you iron it you are going to have perfectly matched seams now look some of them might move some of them might end up a little bit off don't don't sweat on it I mean you know if you're a few millimeters out it's not going to matter but if you um, are a long way out and those seams are completely way off you are going to be able to tell um, at the end of the uh, table runner that you've not taken the time to put the prep in. But if you just take it easy, take it nice and slow, take the time to pin every row, stitch it with a nice quarter inch seam, and then of course set those seams with your iron, which we will do, and I'll come back in a moment after I've sewn this one, and we'll do that together, and I'll show you, and hope and pray that my seams match because I've just been going on and on about it so let's hope that mine do we'll be back in a sec okay it's time for the big reveal but before we do that we're going to press these seams just to set them just to make sure that we've got them nice and set in place there okay so what we do is we fold up the seam and then we iron it flat so when you're doing that, you also need to make sure that the seam that you've just sewn is all going to be ironed in the one direction. So we're going to iron them upways, like so. And you can see there that I didn't do too bad. My seams do match. So that is great. So there we go. So we'll just turn it over to the other side before I show you. And we're just going to give that a bit of a press just to set it in place. Turn it back over. There we go. So you can see there that the intersections meet beautifully. And we're going to continue to do that all the way down through our table runner. I've got a few loose threads there. Just pull those out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pop in another row down the bottom here of our um, sashing strips. Then we're going to put in row two. And then we're just going to continue doing that. So between every row we'll have one of these rows and we'll also finish off with this row. So you can go ahead now and put your whole table runner together and then we'll come back and do the final reveal and then it's ready to be uh, quilted. How about that? Well done if you've got this far, you've done a great job so far. Okay, here we go, so it's all finished. The best way I can display it was to hang it here on my little screen. So you can see there how it looks. And of course, if you wanted to, you could always put a border around it in white or maybe even in a green. I'm not going to. That wasn't the original plan. So what we need to do now is to quilt it. So to do that, you need to put your backing fabric down onto a hard surface with the right side facing down onto the table. Then you need to put down your wadding and then you will put your um, table runner top on top of that. And you can pin it um, and then quilt it got some cat helpers. Hello. Yay. 
Yes, this is Marlo. Hello, my darling. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I'm actually going to send mine off to be quilted because I I can't quilt. I've tried on the machine. I'm just I'm absolutely hopeless at it. Um, oh, if you have purchased a kit, you've um, had some green embroidery thread included. That was so that if you wanted to do some hand quilting um, on it, you could. But that's entirely up to you. So I'm going to send this off as I said to be quilted. Um, I'm going to do a totally separate video on binding so that it's easy to find for lots of future projects. So I will do that and that'll be up in the next few days. So I hope you've enjoyed putting together your table runner. If you have any questions at all, um, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm more than happy to, to answer them for you. I'll just give you a few close-ups so you can have a look. Um, I tried to get all of my my points matching they're all pretty good but as I said don't stress over it too much as long as they match pretty much you're going to get that lovely effect of all the little green cornerstones you're going to get that that beautiful look so there you go anyway I'll chat with you really soon see you later